not sure if Jimmy Butler got hit, quite frankly. I mean, I, I, first of all, you can make the argument about, I, you're looking at me, for Tucker, no question. Yeah. That's legit. I still try to see when Jimmy Butler got hit. Yeah, it's challenging the ruling on the boards of the defensive top. Quinn, what's interesting, you and I have watched a lot of basketball, and we've done a lot of games together. That's one of the first times I've seen that call. I agree with you. I, I haven't seen it. I, there's a, a, there is a chance that I'm not going to like what they say. But the Jimmy Butler thing, doesn't have, that doesn't have to be the call. But, but then, okay, so the question is, what did they call from Malcolm Brogdon and P.J. Tucker? So that, to me, seems where the call has, is made. And normally you would think the foul, if it's on Brogdon, would be against Tucker. I, totally. I, okay. To your point about not seeing, I've never seen that one before. Right. Uh, the, the, the cause and the effect kind of call. And they, again, they potentially could call one against Malcolm for Tucker. Right. But then you're talking two shots versus three. Right. And again, in this instance, with the replay, the replay center is available in Secaucus. But this crew will make the call. James Williams and Michael Smith, two veterans. The younger official, John Conley, Brian Forte, and Marat Kogan, along with Tyler Ford, are back in Secaucus manning the NBA replay center. I still want to know what was the original call. Because then you're looking at conclusiveness of that call. Yeah, the call on the floor is Malcolm Brogdon fouling Jimmy Butler. That's that's what they've called, right? Because they were saying three I, I, free throws. I don't know, though. Th to your point, if they're saying three free throws, they're saying Malcolm Brogdon calls the foul, calls the, the lack of ability to lay, if you will, for Butler. Therefore, there are three fouls. Yeah. Uh, three foul shots. Yeah. I'm thinking two. Okay, here we go. After review... The ruling on the court stands as called. Defensive foul on Malcolm Brogdon. Because the foul did not cut, because the defender did not hit the shooter, it will be side out. Okay. Because yeah, that's what I said. I didn't see the foul where it affected uh, Jimmy Butler. There was a foul there. There's, I, Rick Carlisle will take that. I mean, you don't want any of it, but you'll take that. It is a non-shooting foul. I think the fear was because of the domino effect that Jimmy Butler was going to go to the free throw line. And the Pacers bench, particularly the coaching staff, is concerned about Miami having not come out of their huddle. They just got to delay a game. 41 and seven tenths. Miami will be here on December 3rd. That's got to get off the court. Got yeah. all kind of guys, excuse me, I'm sorry, pardon Pacers got all kind of guys on the yeah. court. They had like guys that's thin, Karis LeVert, no, they put Jeremy Craig, Lamb. Well, Craig and Lamb were on the court. The problem is they got on, on the jerseys that you need in order to play. And that's why you can have too many men. 41 and 7 tenths. Pacers by 9. Good switch. Good switch. He rode. And that's Pacers ball, and they're in control. Final 30 seconds. It will be in the books for the Pacers on opening night. Get it out of the corner. Chris, this is one terrific win. Back to back against one of the toughest teams from a mental and a physical standpoint in this game at the home opener. This is one heck of a win. I mean it. Indiana 39% from the field, 26% from three, and they find a way to gut it out. We talked about defense. You had to be better, and the Pacers better tonight. On a night that Miles Turner battled foul trouble all night long, the bench steps up. It was Jeremy Lamb in the first half, and O'Shea Brissett with an 18-point, nine-rebound game. This is, this is pricey. What he's doing is giving his stars, the guys who earned this, a chance for the people to thank him. They did a terrific job. Malcolm did a heck of a job. He started out a little, little slow, but he came back, did a terrific job, and Sabonis. That's the kind of, you know, those are the kind of things you do to your players that's really important when it's all said and done.
You don't have to do anything now but dribble it right there and just keep it. Then Chris, this is as good a win I've seen in a long time under the circumstances. I'm telling you that. It's a Miami team that's as deep as they are. Pacers fans, you ought to be proud. 17,000 in a gold out. We have not seen a crowd like this in a year and a half.